Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to create a face inside a vintage green monochrome computer monitor. Click that subscribe button to let you know as soon as I upload new Photoshop tutorials. I provided this image of the shape of a vintage CRT monitor screen so you can follow along. Its link is in my video's description below this video or in my project files. We want to create a new layer below this shape, but before we can do this, click the lock icon to unlock the layer. We'll temporarily hide the layer. Control click or command click the new layer icon to make a new layer below the shape. We'll fill it with black, but before we do, check your foreground and background colors. If they're not black and white respectively, press D on your keyboard. Since black is our foreground color, press Alt or Option plus Delete. Click the new layer icon to make a new layer. We'll create the scan lines in this layer. Press Shift plus the F5 key at the top of our keyboard to open the fill window. We can also go to Edit and Fill. Open the list and click 50% gray. Go to Filter and Filter Gallery. Open the Sketch folder and Halftone Pattern. We'll choose Line for the pattern, 2 for the size, and 50 for the contrast. We'll compress the pattern horizontally. To do this, open your Transform tool by pressing Ctrl or Command T. At the top, make sure the chain link icon isn't active between the transform's width and height. This unlinks them so we can transform the width or the height independently of the other. In the Height field, type in 50% and press Enter or Return. Go to View, and if Snap isn't checked, click it to activate it. Make sure your Move tool is active. If it isn't, press V. Press and hold the Shift key as you drag it up until it snaps to the top of your document. Pressing Shift kept it perfectly vertical as you dragged it. Make a copy of it by pressing Ctrl or Command J. As before, press and hold Shift as you drag the copy down until it snaps to the bottom. Merge the two layers by pressing Ctrl or Command E. We'll convert the scan lines into a smart object so we can modify it non destructively. To do this, Click the icon at the upper right of the Layers panel and click Convert to Smart Object. Go to Filter and Lens Correction. Click the Custom tab and in the Remove Distortion field, we'll add a little convex distortion by typing in 1.1. An amount to the left of the middle will concave an image while an amount to the right of the middle will convex it. Go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. Blur it 0.5 pixels. To save some space in the Layers panel, let's collapse the Smart Filters. Make two copies of the scan lines by pressing Ctrl or Command J twice. Hide the scan line copies and make the top shape visible and active. Change its blend mode to multiply. Make the bottom scan lines layer active. Click the adjustment layer icon and click Hue Saturation. Check Colorize and for the hue, type in 120. And for the lightness, type in minus 60. Make the bottom scan lines layer active and reduce its opacity to 50%. Open a photo of a person's head. I downloaded this one from Shutterstock. We'll isolate the face from the neck, shoulders, and background by making a selection around the head. There are many ways to do this, but for this example, I'll use the Quick Selection tool. Starting in version CC 2020, Adobe added an automatic way to select your subject. After you click the Quick Selection tool, you'll now see a button that says Select Subject. 
Clicking it automatically analyzes your image and selects your subject. If you're using a version earlier than CC 2020, we're going to drag the Quick Selection tool over the inside of the subject's head. Before we do, if the background behind your subject is very dark, as in this example, it may be too difficult for the tool to differentiate between the background and the darker areas of your subject. I'll show you a trick to make it easier for the tool to analyze it. Click the Adjustment Layer icon and click Levels. Drag the input white level about halfway across to brighten your overall image. Make your subject active and make a copy of it. Merge the adjustment layer with a copy by shift clicking the adjustment layer to make it active as well and pressing Ctrl or Command E. Drag the quick selection tool over the inside of the head to select it. To deselect areas outside the head, Press and hold Alt or Option as you drag the tool over those areas. Now that we have a selection of the head, we can delete the bright top layer by either pressing the Delete key on your keyboard or by dragging it to the trash. With our selection still active, press Ctrl or Command J to cut and copy the head onto its own layer. We'll make a new layer below the head by Ctrl clicking or Command clicking the new layer icon. Click the foreground color to open the color picker. In the hexadecimal field, type in 1 E F F 0 0. We'll fill the empty layer with the foreground color by pressing Alt or Option plus Delete. Make the head active and change its blend mode to Multiply. Control click or command click it to make a selection of its shape. Click the layer mask icon to make a layer mask of the selection. We'll copy the layer mask next to the green layer below it by going to the layer mask and pressing and holding Alt or Option as you drag it onto the green shaped layer. Click the adjustment layer icon and click color balance. For the midtones, Make the magenta green 100. Drag a copy of the layer mask onto the adjustment layer's layer mask. If you see this message asking you if you want to replace the existing layer mask, click Yes. We'll convert our green head into a smart object so we can modify it non-destructively. To do this, shift click the green layer to make all the layers active that comprise our green head. Then, convert them into one smart object. We'll place it onto the other document by pressing V to open our Move tool and dragging the head onto the tab of our other document. Without releasing your mouse or pen, drag it down and release. Drag the head above the Hue Saturation Adjustment layer. To resize it, open your Transform tool and go to a corner. If you're using a version earlier than CC 2019, press and hold Alt or Option plus Shift as you drag it in or out. If you're using CC 2019 or later, just press Alt or Option as you drag it. To reposition it, go inside the bounding box and drag it. If the head is trying to snap as you drag it, go to View and click Snap to deactivate it. Then press Enter or Return. Make a copy of it and hide it for now. Make the original head active and change its blend mode to screen. Double click an empty area of the layer to open its layer style window. Click outer glow and the color box. Click the foreground color to pick up the color. Then click OK. The blend mode is normal, the opacity is 100%, and the technique is softer. The spread is 10%, the size is 250 pixels, and the range is 80%. Click Inner Glow. Make it the same green color. The blend mode is soft light, and the opacity is 100%. The technique is softer, 
and the source is edge. The choke is zero, and the size is 50 pixels. The range is 50%. Go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. Blur it two pixels. Go to Filter and Filter Gallery. Close the Sketch folder and open the Distort folder. Click Diffuse Glow. The graininess is 0, the glow amount is 9, and the clear amount is 5. Make the head copy visible and active and change its blend mode to lighten. Go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. Blur it 30 pixels. To save space in the Layers panel, let's place the two head layers into a folder. To do this, shift-click the bottom head and press Ctrl or Command G. Name it whatever you'd like. Make the scan lines directly above the folder visible and active. Change its blend mode to subtract. Reduce its opacity to 50%. Make the scan lines above it visible and active and change its blend mode to vivid light. Lastly, we'll brighten our overall image. Click the adjustment layer icon and click Levels. For the input white level, type in 190, and for the input midtones, type in 1.25. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.